सुना जाया नीता गोर सुना नीता गो सुना जाया नीता गो सुना राधा माधव राधा माधव श्री राधे जया नीता गौर सुना जया नीता गौर सुना नीता गौर सुना जया नीता गौर सुना जया जया प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु पा जय प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु पा शिव प्रपाद की जय हरे कृष्ण एवरीवन थैंक यू नीलमद प्रभु फॉर गिविंग मी दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी इट्स हेल्प मी टू प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस फॉर माय पर्सनल बेनिफिट आल्सो I seek the blessings of all the Vaishnavas here, Lord of Senior Devotees, for me in terms of realization, their devotion, sincerity. Thank you. Please bless me, and also I request all you well wishes also, so I can speak something that benefits me and something that inspires all of you also, and we glorify Krishna together. So what I was thinking is, uh, I'll we'll discuss for some time, and then uh, we'll open it up for any discussion, comments also at the end, and then also that can be include reflections or any questions also. And if I don't know the answer, some of the senior devotees here will answer also. So that way we can keep it interactive at the end. Yeah, six till six five, and then six fifteen. Yeah, ten. Sure. Six fifteen. So we are discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam seventh canto today. So what we'll do is we'll briefly chant the verse, uh, and the translation will go through, and then uh, we'll discuss the context, and then we'll go into it. Yeah. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो द वर्स इज फ्रॉम सेवंथ कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद भगवतम लेवेंथ चैप्टर द चैप्टर इज टाइटल द परफेक्ट सोसाइटी फॉर सोशल क्लासेस ओके गुड द वर्स नंबर इज एट टू ट्वेल्व बिकॉज इज इज सच ए लॉन्ग वर्स एंड और डिस्कशन इज अबाउट ओनली द फर्स्ट फोर क्वालिटीज so we'll read the sanskrit for the first verse and then we'll read the complete translation and then we'll read the first four qualities from this verse i'll go through the context here so because of short time we'll not go re re repeat we'll just i'll just read it santosha samadrik seva gramye ho parama sanai ninam paryaye aeksha maunam atma vimarshanam so we'll read the translation and then we'll discuss the context of that translation by his divine grace ac bhakti vidhan swam sri prabhupada translation these are the general principles to be followed by all human beings truthfulness mercy austerity observing fast on certain days of the month bathing twice a day tolerance discrimination between right and wrong control of the mind control of the senses non violence celibacy charity reading of scripture simplicity satisfaction rendering service to saintly persons gradually taking leave of unnecessary engagements observing the futility of the unnecessary activities of human society remaining silent and grave and avoid unnecessary talk considering whether one is the body or the soul distributing food equally to all living entities both men and animals seeing every soul especially in the human form as a part of the supreme lord hearing about the activities and instructions given by the supreme personality of godhead who is the shelter of the saintly persons 
chanting about these activities and instructions always remembering these activities and instructions trying to render service performing worship offering obeisances becoming a servant becoming a friend and surrendering one's whole self o king yudhishthira these 30 qualifications must be acquired in the human form of life <coughs> simply by acquiring these qualifications one can satisfy the supreme personality of godhead So, so how this came about is we were discussing in the morning saturday morning both in class this verse so that's where we picked up the topic when prabhu recommended so i'll what we'll do is we'll i'll give the brief context of this particular section and the relevance of it for us as we all the practicing devotees and then we'll go into the first core four qualities so the context of this is uh, this seventh canto uh, the one of the major attraction for seventh canto is first of all this is from srimad bhagavatam uh, srimad bhagavatam is one of the mahapuranas 18 mahapuranas this is the amala purana this is the best of all the puranas and it contains it is a natural commentary of the vedanta sutra by other himself vyasdeva himself so it's a very wonderful book it's like krishna himself srimad bhagavatam it is like 18 books 12 cantos is a very wonderful purana so in this purana there are 12 cantos out of that this is the 7th canto one of the uh, interesting past time in this uh, canto is this about prahlad maharaj so the previous chapter uh, there was glorification about prahlad maharaj's qualities and then uh, right after hearing prahlad maharaj's qualities uh, yudhishthir maharaj is asking questions to narad muni uh, good thing about bhagavatam is is like a conversations uh, within conversations within conversations is a nice like conversations and stories through that we can learn all the philosophy and what we need to do as a human being what you need to do as a devotee and also it purifies us as simultaneously also that's the beauty of bhagavatam so so in this context this maharaj is asking as he is the because he is the king he wants to know in essence uh, how do we help my human beings uh, citizens in my kingdom to so that they can perfect their lives uh, to devotion service and uh, what will help them to do that so that is in essence question he asked so narmani starts to explain that in this uh, from this verse onwards and then immediately before he tells uh, complete details about the uh, where this is going is uh, explaining about the social structure of varna and ashrama that krishna established that's where it's going but initially he doesn't start there he says that uh, everyone uh, first of all as a human being everyone needs to develop 30 qualities so as a human being we all know uh, human beings as human beings we have higher intelligence compared to animals so there are 8 million 400000 species of life all different varieties of living entities out of them 400000 living entities are human beings so we have the special intelligence and that intelligence needs to be used uh, for inquiring about uh, purpose of life why we are here where we'll go next after this life and then how do we be happy now and how we be how we can be happy eternally so those kind of questions we can inquire that is the intelligence given to us so so narad muni is t- uh, telling that these 30 qualifications 30 qualities uh, need to be developed by all human beings so if you go, out of these 30 qualities first 21 qualities are uh, simple religious principles based that means uh, generally anyone need to have any whether it is practicing devotion service directly or not to the bhagwan or not and the last nine qualities are what we call it as nine processes of devotion service everyone might know uh, shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam like prahlad maharaj tells like chanting hearing remembering krishna serving lotus feet of krishna like that nine process of devotion service but uh, these 21 qualities everyone needs to develop so 
Srimad Bhattam is such a beautiful Purana, uh, beautiful book that uh, we, are, we can be in whatever state we are in the spiritual life and uh, irrespective of that we can uh, learn something from it and we can get knowledge from it. So, so I th we thought it is important for us, all of us, uh, to learn about the human qualities and develop it. So the first core, four qualities is what we'll focus today. And uh, the qualities here, let us go through that briefly and then we can go. Uh, truthfulness is the one quality. Mercy. Austerity is the third quality. And it is described as bathing twice a day. And uh, that is the equivalent as uh, cleanliness. So that's our religious principles. So these are the nice qualities. So before we uh, dive deep into each of these qualities, let us understand why do we need to develop qualities? Because anything we do in life, it's also always important to understand why. Because when we understand why, then we'll be motivated to do it, learn it, or motivated to practice it, motivated to cultivate it, like that. So the why, is, if the why is strong, then we'll not fall away from the path, the wherever we're going goal. So the why is for always devotees, our purpose of our life is to serve Krishna, in devotional service. That is the purpose. And that is for pleasing Krishna. So anything that helps us towards that goal of pleasing Krishna, that's what devotees cultivate. So these qualities that are described by Narada Muni are helpful for developing mode of goodness. Because uh, many of you might know, all of most of you might know that there are three modes of material nature, mode of goodness, mode of passion and mode of ignorance. Each of us are affected by all these, all three, three modes. Though at any point of time in the day, we might be in a, one, one of these modes may be superior, one of these modes may be inferior at that time. But all of us are affected by this. But the significance of this is, uh, some of these modes like mode of goodness is helpful for the cultivating devotion service. It is described that mode of goodness is like a springboard for a devotion service to go into transcendence. Whereas mode of passion, mode of ignorance, uh, when we are affected more by them, then uh, we tend to do sinful activity and uh, we also are not, uh, it is not so easy to cultivate devotion service because of the distractions that come through these modes. So that's why when we cultivate these qualities, it helps us to situate in mode of goodness. And mode of goodness helps us in devotion service to please Krishna. So with that intention, we can uh, learn about them, we can cultivate them, all to please Krishna. It's like the horse before the cart. As long as uh, my Guru Maharaj says it's a horse before the cart, that means if the intention is, horse is uh, like devotional service, to please Krishna, and the cart is like uh, developing qualities, whatever endeavor we're trying to do. So if that is before that, then everything will become becomes easy. So. And why it becomes easy? For devotees it becomes easy because Krishna is our friend. Krishna is our ultimate well-wisher. So he wants to help us in every step of the way. So that's why it makes it easy. So by being in mode of goodness, it helps us to practice devotion service in easy way. And also it helps us to advance easily. So that is why we need to cultivate these uh, qualities. So that is the essence of the why. So then we can go into each of these qualities and discuss them. Uh, in scriptures is described each of these qualities is also described as uh, all these four qualities are also described as four pillars of religion or four principles of religion so in, you might have noticed uh, in our movement uh, in our movement whenever someone gets initiated or takes diksha to start practicing more sincerely more seriously by taking shelter of a spiritual master they take few vows. One of the vows is chanting of 16 rounds, and another vow they take is following the four regulative principles. Four regulative principles. Those four regulative principles we commonly refer as no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. But the, and then some other speech masters also insist on reading scriptures or taking vows to serve the mission of Srila Prabhupada to please him and Krishna. So these, uh, these four regulative principles, when expressed in this way, are nothing but the flip side of the religious principles, four pillars of religion. So for example, no gambling, 
when we say no gambling that the flip side of that is following truthfulness there is a positive side of the principle religious principle and when you say no meat eating the principle is the uh, mercy that is the principle and then for no intoxication it is the austerity and for no illicit sex that is cleanliness so these are four uh, religious principles and uh, when we are uh, taking the vows uh, to follow these principles so at a, at a um, if you look at a simpler level it boils down to no meat eating no intoxication no gambling no illicit sex however if you practice if you try to cultivate them deeper level as a religious principle truthfulness mercy austerity and cleanliness we we can grow a lot more instead of just standing at the gross level we can also develop the subtle qualities also so the, so the focus of the discussion today will be not just as a, a general human being what is this quality means and how to cultivate it but also as a practicing devotee how we can cultivate it as a vaishnava that is the focus today not just on the mundane aspect only like that though some of the mundane aspects also covered because as a human being the qualities are needed to practice devotion service so given that um, yeah yeah and I, i remember one more thing like uh, other ways we talked about how krishna helps us to develop these qualities when we are endeavoring to cultivate these qualities so it is mentioned that krishna decorates his devotees with qualities because he likes it he likes to see those qualities in the devotees for example some other devotees are fortunate they can even dress the deities either at the temple or at the home so when they are dressing their uh, dressing krishna in different ways krishna is decorating them with the qualities also so like that whatever devotion service we are doing whether it's chanting hearing uh, reading scriptures krishna is also decorating us with qualities and when we, uh, when krishna when we go before krishna with those qualities krishna will be smiling krishna will be pleased and when krishna is pleased devotee is pleased and devotee wants to improve his qualities further so this goes on like this loving relationship between krishna and the devotees so now we'll go to the first quality uh, truthfulness truthfulness is given as satyam so the it is described that uh, our vedic culture describes the time in a cyclic way so there are four yugas are described four age periods so satya yuga treta yuga dwapar yuga and kali yuga so in satya yuga it is described that all these four pillars of religion were intact fully and people were very 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 religious at that time so which are the truthfulness mercy austerity and cleanliness so as the age passed by so it went one of each one of the pillars kept falling because of the degradation that was happening uh, among the people in general so finally it is described that when it when it came to kali yuga this is the age that we are in in that age only one pillar is uh, strongly remaining that is truthfulness so uh, the reason this is important is uh, that means this truthfulness is very very important principle for kali yuga if you practice it and if you cultivate it then there is hope that all other pillars also can be uh, restored so that is why is such an important quality of truthfulness or satyam so truthfulness uh, quality can be seen at different levels uh, one level is uh, telling at uh, at the initial basic level which is not telling lies that is the general conception of truth most people know about are being honest not not being deceitful not be not doing any cheating not being uh, doing any illegal activity like that at the very basic level that is given that as devotees still prabhu says that devotees need to be perfect gentlemen and gentlewoman so to do that that needs to be followed by all of us that is given but beyond that um, I, i i remember that uh, i want to give the credit for whatever whatever i'm speaking is from the shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita given by srila prabhupada and also i refer to satsarup maharaj book 26 uh, qualities of a devotee and then uh, book from shivaram sam maharaj and varnash madharma and then uh, some material from chetanya charan prabhu so is nothing coming from me all credits go to them so so then the truthfulness yeah basically the truth 
Uh, truth is uh, there are two different truths our scriptures define: absolute truth and relative truth. Absolute truth is Krishna. Absolute truth is defined in Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, very early on. First verse itself is defined. Absolute truth is the uh, cause of all causes. Everything emanates from Him, and He is a person. So Srimad Bhagavatam is very clear about these conceptions. So we, we are all to understand. what is the real truth absolute truth that is the first thing we all understand once we are convinced ourselves then it behooves on us uh, and uh, to give that knowledge to others that uh, what is the truth what is the real truth we are all after what will make us all happy so and on the contrast relative truth means the truth that we speak about in this world like whatever we speak let us say i say uh, it is it is a, is not dark outside that's a relative truth because in one hour it will become dark so is no more truth anymore whereas absolute truth is truth it doesn't change is always there so in that sense that's the other way of describing this truth basically truth means uh, following truthfulness in that sense means that we understand who is krishna and uh, then we dedicate our lives to follow his instructions following his instructions means the instructions are coming from shastra that he has given like bhagavad gita srimad bhagavatam scriptures is given for our benefit and also from the guru from the sadhu so by molding our life in accordance with the instructions of krishna then and in order to practice krishna consciousness then that is the life of truthfulness so that is the essence of the principle uh, being truthful and another broader way of describing this is when we are um, how we can be truthful that means when we are focused on our path in devotion towards krishna then then so many allurements come some this allurement that allurement whether is wealth or whether is uh, opposite sex or whatever allurement prestige whatever allurements come or allurements come even those come we don't get distracted to them but we stay on the focus for devotion service and keep going that is sticking to the truthfulness that's how also it is described in the scriptures so that is the focus and few other examples of truthfulness that are described by shiran sumaraj basically avoiding falsity like uh, deceitfulness that means misleading others like that and then hypocrisy that means i'm i have something inside but then i say something outside that is deceitfulness and being insincere so that means we are not expressing our genuine feelings sincerity means we are expressing whatever we are feeling instead of being insincere and then other ways he described is um, uh, like a by like be briefly discussed uh, dishonest practice social practices like corruption bribery nepotism nepotism means like i was looking up dictionary it means favoritism like giving jobs to somebody is in a high position and is giving jobs to his relatives that's called nepotism it seems and then being non duplicitous that we briefly described and avoid telling half truths that means we know we need to be truthful so we think we are not lying if we tell half of the story <laughs> that's also not for truthfulness and other is when somebody is telling untruth then we keeping silent that's also not truthfulness is not supporting truthfulness and then um, being respectfully straight forward in the dealings this is also described in the quality of simplicity also but it comes in the truthfulness also and then yeah so these are the main aspects described and then um, when we are truthful even in the mundane sense when we are truthful uh, not lying uh, or keeping our word word of honor uh, when we give word we keep it like like lord rama high princess is coming up here we keep the word that is considered as word of honor so when we do that people trust us but when we when we don't keep our word then people don't trust us and trust is essential for any relationships to build love if there is no trust there is no love but uh, the one of the essential principles for that is being truthful so that's also described and then uh, how do we other thing that is described is um, all these qualities this uh, truthfulness mercy cleanliness and austerity and among other qualities are essential 
to in our surrendering process to krishna so that's that means they are so so important for us all of us to practice and then yeah how do we for example i i i want to develop truthfulness and right now i am lying so much let us say then how do we go from there to the truthfulness stage practicing truthfulness stage in the mundane first level so the way to do it is by deliberation and by devotion deliberation means uh, like krishna says our intelligence is soul is higher than intelligence intelligence is uh, higher than mind mind is higher than senses we know from bhagavad gita so we can sharpen our intelligence by considering how this is harmful not being truthful is harmful in so and so ways like that or not being clean is harmful in so and so ways like deliberation through that and also by reading scriptural scriptures uh, we can uh, sharpen our spiritual intelligence when we do that that helps to get a good foothold of intelligence however there is only one side of the story because whatever we are able to do whether to understand whether to speak whether to hear all the ability is coming from krishna only so the essential second part is that we pray to krishna krishna please help me i really want to develop this truthfulness quality nicely and i want to please you like that we can pray so when we pray then krishna helps us because krishna is always looking for our desire so as long as we have desire to go to him as long as we have desire to serve him he is happy to help us so he is looking forward to that opportunity to help us so we can pray like that and that will help us to go forward and then there are a couple of stories 545 let us there are a couple of stories but i will briefly mention it there is a story of sakshi gopal and chaitanya charitamrita uh, very briefly without much details uh, because of the time constraint yeah there is a one elder brahmana there is one younger brahmana uh, they travel for, for pilgrimage uh, to rindavan and other holy places and the younger brahmana used to take care of the elder brahmana very nicely so because elder brahmana was very very happy almost towards the end of their pilgrimage so then he he wants to give his he got an idea whenever we receive a service we want to reciprocate with service so he wants to reciprocate uh, in this loving exchange he wants to say that uh, i want to give my daughter in marriage to you he uh, that the younger brahmana says no you are very aristocratic brahmana you are wealthy uh, you are all intelligent you are uh, like that but i am very poor and very low class uh, it is not suitable nobody will agree but elder brahmana says no no i really want to give you my daughter in marriage and i can give it uh, because i am dot my daughter but then he says younger brahmana says uh, because younger brahmana is also wants to be truthful so he wants to preserve the truth so he says let us go before gopal deity and then let us pray to them and uh, ask him to accept this stay as witness so they both they both exchange uh, this before the deity gopal and then this goes on pilgrimage ends and they go back to their home and then the younger brahmana reminds after few days that you promised that you will give your daughter in marriage <laughs> then uh, yeah i just before this the elder brahmana discusses with family members because he is very conscientious he wants to be truthful and then uh, so he discusses with family members family members says no nothing doing that how can that happen <laughs> so uh, we'll kill we'll kill ourselves and die if you do this then the elder brahmana out of what he doesn't know what to do he prays to krishna krishna i really want to maintain the truthfulness i gave the word but i don't know what to do i am also torn because my family member also is important for me please help me like that he prays then uh, what the idea the this older brahmana has a son so he gives the idea that uh, you tell him that i don't remember i will take care of it <laughs> so then he tells that i don't remember exactly promising like that he says so then somehow it goes to the village panchayat in india and then finally they agree on that who is the evidence for this then this younger brahmana says gopal is the evidence gopal it is evidence then this elder brahmana son thinks that oh he doesn't have so much faith in the dt so then he says okay if he comes then we'll give then they agree to that agreement 
And then this Engar Brahmana goes all the way to Vrindavan and prays to the deity, my dear Gopal, I want to help me uh, with keep the truthfulness and help the old elder Brahmana to keep the truthfulness principle because it pleases you. Then please come with me. So there are a lot of details uh, what I have to cut short in time. Then uh, DT somehow agrees to walk behind him um, personally. And then he goes all the way to Vidyanagara where the place this Brahmanas are from. And then they he calls everybody and the DT is really here. So then uh, everybody comes and then DT bears witness that yes, yes, this Brahmana really promised. Then they are all surprised and then they all give him marriage and then the, he, uh, DT also gives benedictions to these two Brahmanas. Then it ends happily. Basically the moral of the story is uh, truthfulness is pleasing to Krishna and uh, by standing at, with truth Krishna will always help us. That is the essence I wanted to share. So, there are a few other stories, but I think we don't have time. We'll go from there. Uh, yeah, another very, very important point. Uh, many of us are uh, practicing devotion service, and many of us are initiated also in disability section. So, one of the main ways uh, to keep our truth, uh, Satsarup Maharaj describes in his book, is we made a promise to our spiritual master. We made a promise before devotees. We made a promise before deities of keeping our initiation was. So we should, that is a, one of the first things we need to keep it all the time. Every day chanting our 16 rounds, every day following four regulated principles. Other way it's described is not doing sinful activities. Because these four regulated principles are protecting us not doing in sinful activities in a very basic way. So that is the other way it's described also. And then other thing is, um, yeah, and then remember I was telling that the best way to practice truthfulness is understand who is who is absolute truth and then share it with others. What is the best way to do that? Best way to do that is we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra ourselves regularly every day as a sadhana nicely and then we share with others. We can share different ways the mercy. Oh, we have topic of mercy also, quality of mercy, we can go into that. But essentially when we practice ourselves nicely, the sadhana, chanting, hearing, reading scriptures, serving devotees, like that, when we practice ourselves nicely, Krishna helps us and we, we get purified and whatever level we are at purifying, we can still extend to others. It doesn't need to be, we don't need to be Mahabhavata to extend other, to others. So that is the essence, principle for truthfulness. Let me go to the next quality. Next quality is Daya or Mercy. So, Daya Mercy is defined as uh, to bring relief to someone from distress or to show compassion or forgiveness to someone who could be treated harshly. So, this, this is interesting because whenever we are in slightly superior position, we have an opportunity to treat others nicely or we have an opportunity to not treat them nicely. For example, parents to children. So, we are in a superior position to take care of them, but then we have opportunity to take care of them nicely instead of using our power for pushing on them. So then, yeah, because this mercy is also an important quality that helps us to surrender towards Krishna. And uh, mercy can be dis uh, discussed in multiple ways, but for this discussion, we'll discuss about how we can give mercy to others. But mercy can also be discussed in how we receive mercy from Krishna, devotees, like that also we can discuss. But for this discussion we will discuss about how we can give mercy to others, Daya. And then, yeah, devotees, uh, in the Srimad Bhavatam uh, third canto, few cantos before this, Kapil Dev is giving instructions to Devahuti. So many instructions he gives, but one of the essence, uh, he one of the points he mentions is, this daya is a quality of uh, a sadhu. So that means a very essential quality to have for all of us to cultivate. And then um, one of the uh, simpler way of describing mercy is like uh, remember we talked about uh, no meat eating like that. So one of the simpler way of describing is by showing mercy to all living entities, not just human beings. 
So that is the one way to de describe this mercy. That means animals also are counted because they are all parts and parcels of Krishna. So we need to serve them. And then, yeah, and then in the mercy also counts, uh, mercy we can give, give our mercy to others in multiple ways depending upon our level. If it is a Mahabharata devotee, somebody sees them, they will start chanting. But for us practicing devotees, as we are growing up, as we are practicing ourselves, we can give mercy in a different ways. Like for example, going to Harinam Sankirtan and then chanting. So somebody hears the holy name once, they get so much uh, Sukriti and their devotion service has started. We, we take it so cheaply because we got it so easily. But somebody hearing once also is so beneficial for them. So that is one way to do it, for example. And another way to do it is we can give prasadam. Prasadam distribution doesn't need to be like I cook for 100 people and they distribute prasadam. It doesn't need to be so elaborate. It can be as simple as when we go to office, then we can take something, whatever, whatever our wife makes or whatever we can make, take it to the temple office. It can be simple nuts offered. It can be simple sweets, like simply wonderful or some sweets that doesn't take much effort energy like that are sharing with our co-worker one co-worker some prasadam whatever we have some extra one item that's okay like it can be any simple way like that and it can be also uh, there's prasadam holy name we talked about and then sharing something about where is the temple a temple has a nice program that is another way to sh uh, share mercy also uh, is described in Shastra, that's called Vartaman Projection Guru. So we don't need to tell a whole philosophy class, Bhagavatam class to somebody. We can just direct them to someone who can help them. That is itself a big thing, because helping somebody to hear a Krishna Kada, is a, Krishna is very pleased with it. And they get benefited so much. So essentially, when we are giving, if you notice, the theme we are going is, the real mercy we are giving is, uh, how to help them to connect to Krishna. That is the real mercy, the ex full mercy. However, this is because this is considering the eternal benefit of the living entity. However, this doesn't mean that we should not be kind to others. Let us say somebody is hungry, we should not give them food. It is not meaning that. That is also mercy. Mercy, because these are all qualities of a human being. When somebody is suffering in some form or the other, we are meant to help them. And Vaishnava is paradukaduki. However, this can be coated with uh, something that helps them eternally because that gives them uh, that gives us high return on investment <laughs> because when we sp spend our time effort energy we want to help other person in such a way that it helps in the long run not just this one lifetime or one day or one week or one month or one year so that is the uh, essence for giving them eternal benefit we need to look for something for example, we are giving food to somebody, we can give them food uh, that is offered to Krishna. Then it becomes mercy of Krishna. Or when we are giving some other benefit, some clothes or something, we can uh, tell them to chant Hare Krishna. Or let us say we don't want to be sectarian, that's okay. They can chant the holy name of God, whatever the God they know. It doesn't have to be Krishna's name directly. It can be Christians believe in uh, their God, Muslims believe in one God, but we know all as a devotees, we know there is only one God total. So we, people are calling by different names. Even if they are calling by that holy name, that is, they are making one step. Then if they are sincere, they go to the right, right place to go to the next step like that. So like that we can add some element of devotion to it. Or we can just say, uh, Hare Krishna, while giving whatever we give. At least that much we are able to do. Sometimes we cannot add the devotional element fully. Then that will help. Or when we are when we invite guests to our home and we feed them prasada, talk to them nicely, or hosting guests, or uh, for example, uh, feeding Vaishnavas, for example, Sunday feast, for example, or festivals. These are different ways we can give mercy to others. It doesn't need to be one form. And the, the way to look at it is, whenever we have a desire uh, to cultivate this and we want to serve in this way, Krishna will give unlimited ideas. Somebody likes book distribution, they want to distribute book, Krishna gives unlimited ideas and opportunities to do that. Somebody likes to distribute prasadam, he gives unlimited ideas and opportunities to do that. So it all starts with desire and prayer to Krishna. And Krishna will help us. 
so that is one way of mercy and then uh, what will destroy the mercy so what is the enemy of the mercy is the intoxication so intoxication uh, can be in a gross way or subtle way gross way is like uh, taking alcoholic drinks uh, very gross or uh, for example uh, drugs or even uh, slightly uh, well, lower level of intoxication is tea and coffee that we devotees also abstain from so that is the gross level and then uh, subtle level is with false ego that means i'm thinking i'm this body and my family my country like that thinking in terms of the body so that's the subtle form of false ego these two are uh, are forms of intoxication that will not help us to extend mercy to others why that is so because when we take either gross intoxication or subtle intoxication like for my me mine me and mine consciousness then we are only thinking about ourselves meaning how i can give pleasure to myself how i can fulfill my desire so our consciousness is revolving around that only then where is that i am thinking about somebody else so that is why intoxication is the enemy of the mercy that's why, that's why we need to be careful to cultivate the consciousness of being spirit soul servant of krishna this consciousness will help us to give, be in merciful situation any time and uh, what helps that by associating with devotees regularly by reading scriptures and by chanting the holy name by doing the sadhana prabhupad the program that prabhupad gave when we do that scriptures have abundant ways to remind us a beautiful ways to remind us all in a beautiful story packaged nicely then we get inspiration one day even we don't have to think too much just by reading we are getting purified so that is the other aspect i want to mention about intoxication and then uh, how do we cultivate mercy some other steps we talked about some steps already some more steps are uh, by serving vaishnavas so satsar mara describes something very nicely because the elevated devotees like sri la prapada or uh, lord krishna himself who came as chaitanya mahaprabhu they can give extreme mercy they can give love of god head or they can give inspiration to start devotion service like that right but uh, what we can do at our level uh, i'm speaking for myself for devotees like me we can uh, serve our spiritual master so when we serve our spiritual master who has the mood to distribute the mercy of sri lok prapada to everyone then we assist in that distribution of the mercy somehow or the other by following the instructions of spiritual master that is how we can be agents of the mercy we remember one thing whenever we are doing something is that we are agents or instruments of mercy that means that ability is there today to give somebody but tomorrow we may not have that ability because krishna is giving that right now to us so when we are situated in that then we are not upset when we are not able to do next time and we are not proud this time when i am able to do so that caution we can exercise as devotees so that is one more thing and giving kindness and prasadam we discussed and by cultivating the concept of a servant of servant of krishna we discussed and then yeah by seeing that everyone is part and parcel of krishna and how krishna is there in everyone's heart that also helps us to give mercy because then we don't go into envious mode i'm not competing with you because you are able to do something better or you have something higher i don't comp- envious because i'm thinking that we are all servants of krishna we are all part and parcel of krishna we are all meant to give krishna pleasure like that so that is that is a consciousness we can cultivate also this is a very high consciousness but we can cultivate practice and then yeah by just doing devotion service we also uh, develop mercy so that is the other thing that's good thing is this go reciprocal uh, by cultivating these qualities mode of goodness is improving we can do devotion service easily shri nita gosundar ki jay radha madhav ki jay jagannath balde subhade ki jay so they go reciprocal like by developing these qualities we are situating ourselves in mode of goodness that is helping devotion service and by doing devotion service nicely our heart is getting purified our mind is getting purified then we we more inclined to practice these cult qualities cultivate these qualities like that so it goes both ways so 
we'll go to the next one austerity i think in the interest of time instead of covering all four of them i'll stop there with the third quality one more austerity austerity refers to voluntarily accepting something that is not comfortable to the body or something that is not convenient comfortable for the mind or soothing to the mind that's what austerity means and uh, as we discussed we are not animals we are human beings we are given a higher intelligence and that that means we are given additional privileges with that comes a responsibility uh, for the taking for the human life and that means we need to take austerity so austerity uh, impersonalists also practice austerities how they practice they practice severe austerities we cannot even handle it but uh, our objective is not to practice austerities for austerity's sake like we discussed our objective is to practice austerity to please krishna so in that sense whatever is helping whatever is favorable for our devotional service we can take up the austerity the examples our acharyas give very prominently for this austerity quality is uh, pr- practicing fasting on ekadashi days f- fasting completely or what based on our situation fasting from grains and beans at least like that and fasting on festival days this is a this is a good way of practicing austerities and that will help our increase our determination it will also help us to use the time that is saved by fasting to do more devotion service that day so that is one way and then uh, practicing other qualities of goodness like practicing celibacy in grihastha life also we are supposed to practice uh, celibacy except for procreation so that's also an austerity or for example chanting or rounds in the morning instead of late at night is an austerity but that's favorable to krishna so our chanting chanting instead of uh, going watching some video that's an austerity like hearing a class instead of uh, going through the flow with something else is an austerity like that whatever is favorable to our krishna consciousness we can take up that is the austerity that will please krishna so yeah and then by practicing this austerity but not only krishna pleased demigods are also pleased not only indirectly how when krishna is pleased demigods are pleased but also demigods are also pleased because they consider it as a sacrifice for them and then yeah and bhagavad gita krishna was mentioning uh, mentions austerity in different modes austerity in goodness austerity in fashion austerity ignorance i will briefly mention it basically the austerities can be practiced at the body level like a cleanliness Right. like taking bath twice a day like that and then um, at a words level that means speech that is favorable to krishna consciousness not hurting others truthful pleasing not agitating others like that is described and then also at austerity at the mind level that means being satisfied with whatever we have and being tolerating the things that go on every day we all might think that i am the only one suffering everybody else is happy in the world we might think that but not true everybody has some different variation of suffering at a different point in time so we can be satisfied with whatever we got and keep the focus on devotion service so that is the austerity of the mind and then other way to cultivate austerity is oh i'll mention this couple of minutes couple of minutes basically pride pride is the enemy for austerity so how the pride comes by uh, it's given as uh, two roots of pride are given unrestricted sense enjoyment that means not regulated sense enjoyment unrestricted sense enjoyment and bodily identification which we talked briefly these are the roots of pride but uh, how we can take care of them by serious scriptural study and by regulated sadhana regulated sadhana means doing at a particular time doing a certain amount of sadhana like that so by doing these things it will curb the unrestricted sensation tendency and it will also curb the bodily identification that's a wonderful thing it's not a mental thing okay i am spirit so i am spirit so i am spirit so not like that so it helps devotion service helps like this scriptural study and regulated sadhana so by doing that we'll get the increased sense and mind control and then we can be inclined to austerity so by doing more devotion service we'll be inclined to do more austerity also because we are getting purified initially it becomes it feels so hard why should i do it why should i get up in the morning like that is interesting prabhupada 
even in the last days when Prabhupada was uh, uh, going from this planet, he had in mind, he said, cleanliness, rising early in the morning, seeing Mangalarti will help us uh, stay in the mode of goodness, which will help in devotion service like that. So I think uh, I'll st uh, stop there, but I look forward to everybody sharing of uh, any corrections. If you have anybody, please share any corrections also. Also, please share any wonderful points that you might have that will help all of us in cultivating these qualities. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Very nice class. I was waiting for your class for long. Thank you for your engagement also. <laughs> you mentioned about those 30 qualities. These are the qualities that a human can develop. And in our scripture, it also says that Yasyatma Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchana Sarvai Sate Sama Sate Sura. So these are by performing the devotional service. This, as a byproduct of devotional service, this automatically comes. Or we can develop it on our own also. Thank you, Guru. I, I was trying to touch on it. Basically, like in Simbhavadam, first chapter, second chapter also we hear, by performing devotional service, mode of passion and ignorance goes away. That means we develop goodness qualities. In that sense, that is true. However, by cultivating these qualities, it helps our devotion also. But that stage in Bhagavad Gita is described, for example, Samadarshina. That happens at Brahma Buddha stage in Bhagavad Gita is described. But instead of waiting for that stage, we can cultivate uh, equal vision now, for example. Then what happens is, we are not developing the real quality like you described. We are getting the shadow of that real quality, transcendental quality. That shadow quality is very good for practicing devotion service now. But when our devotion service becomes pure, when our heart and mind are purified, then we get the real quality. So this is a resemblance of that quality, but still is helpful for a devotion service. So that means we do, that is the reason we should cultivate also parallelly while doing devotion service. Makes sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to you. As always, thank you so much. It was an excellent lecture. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think I was waiting for like, this last ceremony I heard it was really wonderful. So you just added on like icing on the cake. So thank you. I just I think there are a few realization which was very wonderful, which I liked was when you say that we are agents of mercy, and when you have it, you should give it because you may not have it next time. That's actually a very powerful statement because uh, our devotional service goes like that. It's not like going sometimes goes ups and downs. So when we are doing really great devotional service, we have the mercy, then we should give it right away for that mm -hmm. one. That's very difficult. And the other thing was the subtle intoxication. I think that really affects our devotional service. Sometimes we became a little bit more advanced by reading or puffed up our good positions. Mm -hmm. Then we start thinking about, oh, you know what? I am this. I am the doer of this. And that just slowly, slowly starts cutting down devotional service and going that. So thank you so much. That's yeah. very wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We talk about the pride. Pride? Now, you have material pride where we see a lot of people make a lot of money and everything, and suddenly they fall down. For some circumstances, they lost in the business, like Ambani's brother or somebody had a real problem. Now in the spiritual pride, when you look at it, and you saw in the last few years the Christianity, and the guy, the Pope, underneath the Pope, who are the higher authority in Christianity, when they developed the pride, they started doing illicit sex with the children and all kind of this thing. So what is the basis of having spiritual pride and how, why they are falling down like that? Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, I'll briefly share. And if other senior devotees would like to share something, please feel free. So what I heard from devotees, I'll share. So one is, um, even though your question is not that, I'll briefly address one point, which is just because uh, some devotee, some top person falling down in one spiritual institution doesn't mean that the spiritual institution is bad or that religious process is bad like that. You did not say that, but I want to make it clear. 
just because one doctor did not take care of us properly doesn't mean all doctors are not good like that. Prabhupada gives the example. So that's one thing. Second thing is, you know, it's described, there is a white paper that GBC wrote uh, some years ago describing about how, why fall downs happen. I did not read the white paper myself fully, but I heard from my mentor. Uh, basically, the essence of that, as I understand it, is that um, when we are in a higher spiritual platform, um, as you grow in devotion, whichever spiritual path doesn't matter, what happens is if you, you should have right kind of association, not only that we are preaching to somebody, but we should have some friendly devotee association also. And what happens is in that stage, they may be struggling with certain bad anadha from the past because they're not fully pure yet. Some anadha from the past from residue comes up. When that comes up, they don't know how to handle it because they don't know anybody to talk to and share with. So then what they do, they're trying to hide within themselves so they don't get any help. Then they fall down. So the remedy that is given to us, as my understanding is, that as we are practicing devotion service, we try, try to practice as sincerely as we can, as seriously as we can, but also have, have some devotee friends and with nice association where you can, where you can freely share, oh my God, suddenly I've started watching movies. Then we share with somebody. Then they will start at that initial stage itself, they will help us. Not, they don't need to have a solution for us, but they will help us to connect to somebody or they re help us to read something together instead of going to a movie, for example. That is my understanding of how fall downs can be prevented. I don't know if others want to share, please share. I think the fall down only happens when you have a false ego. Hmm. Hmm. Fall down only happens yeah. Nice friend. Yeah. Because false ego. Because bodily consciousness. Yeah. Yes. But to overcome that, our regular sadhana, if we do, yeah. Like for example, uh, we. Uh, this is not exactly what you are asking, but Bharatamara's story we hear about is fall down. So the uh, our Rachas give the explanation that he deliberately. I'm using the words like this uh, to explain my view uh, from the Acharyas only, that he deliberately neglected the sadhana that he should do every day. But if he continued the sadhana, and then if he had association, that would have prevented it. But he was in a forest alone. And then he thought about deer, and then he thought, okay, I, nobody is there to take care of it. But in reality, Krishna is there also to help. That means he can be kind also, but not at the expense of his sadhana period, like that. My understanding is the same thing that he has two things. When you're talking about uh, uh, our spiritual uh, sadhana or when you talk about the religious too, like Christianity or Islam or any religious faith, you look at it, the most common reasons that people fall down from whatever positions, first of all, they don't really achieve the position, they just are practicing on that platform. And the second thing, when they do not have association of the similar quality of people, and then your devotion falls down, whether it's Christians or Muslims or Hindus, when you, when you, when you focus out of that devotions, then you fall down. In our ISKCON society also we have some incidents of falling down, because of the first and foremost thing they do is to ch stop chanting the four, uh, 16 rounds. And second thing, they do not have good association. They are the two pillars for falling down. But other religious faith, I'm sure the same thing. They have some principles core to follow. They do not follow. And of course, the Maya is so strong, so it can attract you. So minute you deviate from that, the chances for fall down is there. Thank you. Thanks for the time. 6.15 now, I think. Uh, okay, we'll have one more question. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, um, in my studies, what I, which I've learned is that the connection with the absolute truth is in the environment. So a lot of times, when you when you see um, when you hear the words of, of Krishna, you can you can see the truth even in the environment. So lately, I've been studying the planets, and um, I noticed that uh, Saturn and 
the planet Saturn and the planet Jupiter are both gas planets that go opposite directions. And what happens, they're gas planets. And what happens is when the gas planet gets too, too build up with gas, it falls until it has to release some gas and then it can restabilize and get back to its proper, you know, platform. And the reason why when Krishna made the planets like that, he made them to go opposite directions to, to put a level of control to stabilize the whole entire situation. Mm, nice. So that, that's another way. If, if it works in the environment, it's true. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I like it. Looks like you're from astronomy. You know astronomy a lot. Wonderful. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we, that's a, very nice because that is the way by seeing the nature, like you use the word environment, by seeing the nature and environment, what's happening, we can realize that is really there's an intelligent person behind it. Krishna is there behind it. That's a wonderful realization. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Prabhu. So we'll uh, stop right now. Thank you so much, Sundar Prabhu. It was amazing. Thank you. Mahaprasadi Govindi Namo Brahmani Vaishnavi Salpa Punya Vatamrajam Vishwasana Vajayati Sharira Vidyaja Jorindri Tahika Jivafale Vishasagara Tara Madhya Jiva